Throughout the years, we have never interfered. Until now. Welcome to your weekly ticket. Ooh, Marvel just dropped their first trailer for Eternals. The trailer is stacked with familiar faces like Gemma Chan, Brian Tyree Henry, Kamal Nanjiani, Salma Hayek, and Angelina Jolie. The film, which is directed by newly minted Oscar winner Chloe Zhao, takes us back to the earliest years of the MCU, before Iron Man, Captain Marvel, and even before Captain America. Timothy Chalamet has been tapped to play a young Willy Wonka. The Oscar-nominated actor will star in Wonka, a big-screen reimagining of Raw Dahl's classic children's book, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The film will be directed by Paul King, who wrote the screenplay along with Simon Farnaby. The story will focus on Willy Wonka and his adventures prior to opening the world's most famous chocolate factory. The film marks the third time Warner Brothers has taken on the story of Wonka, with actors Gene Wilder and Johnny Depp previously playing the iconic character. And it finally happened, John Boyega has confirmed that he is set to star in Attack the Block 2. A decade after its original release, Boyega will reprise his role as Moses in the sci-fi cult classic film which helped launch his career. The actor shared his excitement about the project, saying, It's been a decade since Attack the Block was released, and so much has changed since then. I'm excited to see this heightened story return to the streets of London. Moses has remained one of my favorite characters to play, and bringing him back is such a huge honor. Joe Cornish, who wrote and directed the 2011 film, will also write and direct the sequel. Well, it looks like summer movie season is back, and with theaters opening back up, the summer lineup has a great mix of comedies, drama, horror, and yes, even a Marvel movie. And here to break down everything you need to know about what's coming to the big screen this summer is writer at Slate, Karen Hahn. Karen, we made it to the summer. I can't believe it. I can't believe it's summer. I can't believe it's going to happen and that we might be able to go to see movies. That's still a completely crazy concept to me. We're going to have so many movies to see and it like I'm <laughs> I'm so excited. So, how about you tell me what you think is going to be the biggest film this summer? I think there are a few contenders, but the first thing that really jumps to mind is the movie adaptation of In the Heights. I feel like every trailer that I've seen for it, even like pre-pandemic has made me cry, even though I'm not like <laughs> the, that musical's biggest fan. Like just seeing that has made me think like, oh my God, like it's going to be an emotional experience. And especially like having a big blockbuster that's a musical in theaters right after this pandemic, I think is going to be a huge draw to theaters. I didn't expect you to say that. I, I expected, oh, yeah? so there's so many movies coming coming out, but you're absolutely <laughs> right because it's more of an event. It's kind of like a musical mm -hmm. thing. You're going to have people listening to it afterwards. You're going to have them like singing it, making parodies and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah it's going to be a big event and it's definitely going to define the summer and you know, maybe there'll be, this will be a summer thing. What about your most anticipated film? For me, it's definitely something on a slightly smaller scale. I would say that my most anticipated for the summer is The Green Knight, just because I feel like that's another one of those movies that had a release date at the beginning of the pandemic that's just been pushed and pushed and pushed because they've been waiting for it to be able to have the theatrical experience rather than just straight to streaming or something like that. And I'm a huge fan of David Laurie and like the most recent trailer I felt went even wilder on the kind of crazy, beautiful visuals that he's so good at, especially in this very like mythological story, this take on um, Arthurian legends. Um, everything about it looks so good. And also that all the jokes about it being like Dev Patel summer, like still feel really valid. <laughs> um, and, and that feels like a good note also to go into the summer with, even if it's not necessarily as much of an like huge event film as In the Heights might be. Yeah, you cried on In the, In the Heights trailer. I cried on this trailer. This is the one that made me oh, cry. Oh yeah. But <laughs> Any I'm, specific moment that made you cry or just overall? Just the excitement? second it started. <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see this. But yeah, you're right. This is going to be one you definitely want to just have, like, have that full big experience in the theater. So yeah, great, yeah, great choice. What smaller film do you think people should be looking out for? Well, I guess this is now two A24 films that I'm naming. So I don't know that I can call them small anymore. But it's I think okay to simp for A24. 
We're all guilty. <laughs> we all love them. It's hard not to. Um, but I think Zola is kind of maybe the less um, blockbustery release that I would point people to, just because like that initial Twitter thread that the story is based on is so crazy and went viral in its own right. And the combination of talent in this movie, Janixa Bravo, um, Taylor Page, Riley Keogh, everyone in the movie is absolutely incredible. And the trailers look like they're doing something kind of fun, not necessarily straightforward to tell the story, which is, I think, the way to go when you are adapting something that is basically a Twitter tall tale, you know? Don't get lost in the big films. You definitely got to check out stuff like that, for sure. I want to talk about something uh, you were involved in. You were the creator of the <laughs> Bong Hive craze for the Parasite <laughs> Can premiere. First of all, tell us what that is, and then tell me what the next craze, like, film hive you're going to make. So the bong hive, like really, like the overall, the, generally the term is to describe all of us who are fans of Bong Joon Ho. Um, we were commenting just before recording, like I have my parasite poster right here I love to it. show love off, <laughs> show off the Bong Joon Ho love. Um, that kind of just started like as we were in line to go see Parasite, um, the pre one of the press screens of Parasite can is just something that just popped into my head. I was like, bong hive? Bong hive? Should I tweet bong hive? And then from there, it just took off to a degree that like, I had no idea that it was gonna go that far um, during like Parasite's Oscar campaign. As far as like what's next for the hype train, I would love to say like, it's gonna be the Green Knight or it's gonna be something else, but like you really have to wait to see after you watch the movie. Cause like the hype took off like after seeing Parasite because the feeling of like coming out of a theater after you've seen a movie that's so perfect, it's really an indescribable and you can't recreate that high. Um, and so you gotta wait and see like what's gonna trigger that response. You can't, unfortunately okay. not something you can tell from trailers. That's kind of ominous. You're like, I'm waiting to see what I create <laughs> the next hive for. All right, well, what I'm very excited. What impress me? <laughs> <laughs> Director's just <laughs> slipping you a 20, come on. <laughs> All right, well, if, if people want to follow you personally and maybe find out what the next hive is gonna be, where can people find you? Um, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Karen Y. Han. That's where I'll, I retweet like my work from Slate and stuff. And generally, um, I'm on Letterboxd and Instagram as well. But Twitter is, I think, the main place to go. Isn't it always? All right. Well, thank you so much, Karen. Have a great one. Thank you so much. In theaters this week is A Quiet Place Part 2 and Cruella. That will happen. A bomb, I think. Following the deadly events at home, the Abbott family must now face the terrors of the outside world as they continue to fight for survival in silence. Forced to venture into the unknown, they quickly realize that the creatures that hunt by sound are not the only threats that lurk beyond the sand path. This second installment sees the return of Emily Blunt as Evelyn Abbott, along with returning cast members Noah Jupe as Marcus and Millicent Simmons as Regan. And available to watch on Voodoo is The Unholy and The Waterman. The Waterman is real. Legend has it that he's still living up by the lake, searching the waters and the woods for his wife, so he could bring her back from the dead. Gunner sets out on a quest to save his ill mother by searching for a mythical figure who possesses the secret to immortality, the Waterman. After enlisting the help of a mysterious local girl, Joe, they journey together into the remote wild horse forest, but the deeper they venture, the stranger and more dangerous the forest becomes. Their only hope for rescue is Gunner's father, who will stop at nothing to find them and in the process will discover who his son really is. The film stars Rosario Dawson, Alfred Molina, and David Oyelowo. Okay, well that's it for today, but before you go, leave us a comment and let us know what summer film you're most looking forward to seeing. I'm Kale, and I'll see you next time.